Welcome back to the Cross Border Interviews 2020 Year in Review. I am your host, Christopher Brown, and today's guest is a returning guest to the show. He is the leader of the Alberta Party, Mr. Barry Morishita. Barry, welcome back to the show. Hey, uh, glad to be here, Chris. I really am. So, Barry, let's get the first question right out of the way. We are coming up to the end of 2022. For you, the leader of the Alberta Party, how has your year been? Well, it's been eventful, as you know. It kind of ended on a huge event. Um, you know, I think the 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 overall the year, it's been great to get out and see Alberta and listen to the priorities of Albertans from a provincial perspective. And, you know, we we went a long ways to to raising some money and building some profile, but but really it all kind of culminated right at the end of the year when we had the by-election here in Brooks Medicine Hat running against the premier. And uh you know, I think we made leaps and bounds there. We uh, we gained more popular vote. We we raised a lot of money, got a lot of media coverage, and uh, you know that went really well. And now uh, we've you know the inquiries for people from people who want to run, who are interested in volunteering or buying memberships, and seeing that there is really an alternative to the NDP and the UCP in the upcoming election uh, has grown by leaps and bounds. So you know, I think we kind of. Uh, didn't get the result we wanted in the by-election, but we certainly, I think, are ending the year on a high note. So let's talk about the by-election. Let's go to October and then work our way backwards from October to January. Um, well, I should say November because the by-election was held in November. Yeah, 8th? November the eighth. That's November the eighth. Um, this was your first provincial run. This was the first time running under a party platform. Was it different? Was it what you expected going from municipal politics into the political realm that is partisan politics? Well, you, you know, I, I I think it was to a degree um, uh, kind of what we expected. You know, we've been preparing for a by-election. We just didn't think it was going to be happening in uh, Brooks Medicine Hat. We were hoping it would be in Calgary Elbow. But, but, but be that as it may, uh, yeah, it was kind of what we expected. I guess at the end of the day, though, one of the things that you know, it is disappointing about the whole um, the whole uh, political process in terms of the party processes. Just the emphasis on kind of the cult of leadership and and really um, how it's kind of deteriorated our democracy in my in my mind. You know, the the people of Brooks Medicine had of some really serious local issues, and they're extremely unique uh, riding, as are almost every riding in the province of Alberta. It's pretty hard to overlay one over the top and say, look, you know, we're the same, but we are specifically very unique. And I, and I don't think when we, when we make our minds up voting in terms of just the leadership only, uh, that I think the constituency has the potential to lose a little bit out of it. I mean, you know, now it's our job as, as, as members of the constituency to hold our new MLA to account and, and hope she realizes that um, even though she chose it, in my opinion, to, to have a safe place, soft place to land hope she realizes uh, that her job as an MLA uh, uh, comes with some accountability to the people here. So we'll see what happens. You, you talked about the issues that you heard at the doorstep. You talked about the diverse issues that are facing the people of Brooks Medicine Hat. I just want to jump in here for a second and ask the question. Was there issues that weren't addressed during this by-election that you wish were more addressed on a provincial stage? And are you going to try to advocate for them moving forward into the sort of the red zone of the 2023 general election? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think I think when I when I think about some very local issues that didn't get addressed very well, I don't think our broadband issue locally in the rural areas was was addressed very specifically. I think ed education, the diversity of the population, particularly in Brooks, I don't think that was addressed at all. I think, uh, you know, we didn't really, um, we heard about it in a, in the ATA forum, but, you know, broadly in the by-election, I don't think uh, there was a lot enough attention paid to that. Um, very specific issue for Brooks. Uh, I think the in healthcare, when we think about the Medicine Hat Regional Hospital and, and the hospital here in Brooks, again, I don't think those local issues were dealt with. There are some Serious issues around palliative care in Brooks and uh, respite care in Brooks, assisted living, uh, home care, and in Medicine Hat, the emergency department, um, the whole ambulance situation, of course, that is a provincial issue. But again, there wasn't enough time or, or effort spent about how locally these could be fixed, uh, how much local uh, input um, should have been considered in some of the problem solving. And, and I fear that the provincial perspective will overtake 
uh, some local concerns. So those are just some of them. I, business is another one. I think there's some very specific things around energy and renewable energy that that weren't uh, directly addressed for this part of the uh, part of the province. You know, lip service to pay things like you know a hydrogen hub here. But there weren't very many specific commitments made and, and that not discussed a lot in the business community. So we certainly um, had some gaps for sure. What did you learn about yourself during this experience? Because I can imagine being the candidate and being on the ballot is a different experience in itself. But did you learn anything about how you need to sort of adapt to how Alberta politics has played in 2023? Yeah, you know, I, 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 about myself, I think, uh, well, I think I learned some positive things about myself. I think I, I saw that I could, you know, 28 days hard without too much sleep and, and I managed to survive it, I, although I did need a couple of days rest at the end of it. Um, and, and I think, yeah, you know, I think I learned too that kind of the naivety relative to municipal politics is that, you know, even if you're the best person for the job and even if you do really well, uh, which which, you know, um, by a lot of accounts, uh, you know, I, I, I showed myself to be a, to a very, very well local candidate. I think, yeah, again, um, that provincial messaging and the fear of not getting the other thing kind of overtook the Alberta party and myself. So the one group not wanting the NDP and the other group not wanting the UCP and, and, and kind of being, um, you know, very committed to that track versus a track of looking for uh, what's the best solution for Brooks Medicine Hat? So, you know, even though you think that's the right thing to do when it comes to a political campaign, sometimes you have to find a, a better way of delivering that message. So I, I think that's something I learned. Now, I before this interview, I went back and listened to our three interviews that you and I had done together to, for the show. Yeah. And one of the reoccurring things that came up a lot over the three interviews that we talked about back in February and July and August was rural healthcare, but also rural crime. Rural crime was one of these big issues that you kept on talking about in our interviews. Over the last year, have you seen movement on this? I know that the new premier, Premier Danielle Smith, is saying that we need a provincial police force. Is this something that you heard on the ground in Brooks Medicine Hat? Is it something you're hearing from your prospective candidates when you're approaching them about uh potentially running in the upcoming election for you? No, you know, I think a uh, response to rural crime is still an issue. Um, but but that it's interesting, but the creation of an Alberta police force is not the answer. That that was pretty universal. I very I haven't actually heard uh, too many people talk to me about how important it is to get an Alberta provincial police force. And and again, I think this speaks to the the issues that are wrong with the provincial government now and the way the province's governance goes is that they're not paying attention to local communities. You know, I've just learned recently that that there's some budget issues in, in the field, in the alert field uh, with the alert units and things. And those are scary things for rural Alberta because they are very big contributors to, you know, these clusters of crimes or gangs or pieces that kind of filter up and, and inundate an area. And then the alert comes in and does a great job cleaning it up. I've seen it happen myself right here in Brooks. And when I hear about those kinds of budget issues, a $3 million, $4 million budget issue not being addressed while we're thinking about spending 300 to $500 million just to transition a force, I, I, I think priorities are screwed up. So yes, um, you know, response to rural crime is still an issue, but overwhelmingly we hear that the Alberta Provincial Police Force is doesn't seem the way that people want it to go. They want people to invest in their communities and they want community solutions. And uh, we, that's how we should be approaching this. We could do so much if we paid attention. Now, I want to talk about the Alberta Party in as a whole now, going back for the last 12 uh, months. How has the Alberta Party grown over the last 12 months? Because you're heading into the next general election. Uh, you kind of got sidetracked with the by-election, but you still have people looking for candidates. How is the Alberta Party standing at the end of 2022 compared at the beginning? You know, I, I, I think we're in a better place. Uh, I think, you know, I think one of the issues that the Alberta Party has had and, and continues to have, because without a seat in the legislature, sometimes getting that media presence in the, you know, regular media presence is difficult. And we certainly, uh, in the by-election, that certainly made a big difference. And, you know, the groundwork that we did throughout the summer and, and throughout the year certainly does help to an extent, but it never seems to move the yardsticks quite fast enough. 
you know, with a short runway to the election. So, uh, you know, I think we're definitely in better place in terms of our exposure to the province. And we have some, uh, we had to kind of stop the uh, candidate selection process kind of stalled in the midst of that 30 day period there with the by-election, but it's, it's revved back up again. And, and, and we have a lot of camp people that are interested in becoming candidates. So we're trying to get them set up for that. And I think that will help as well. Uh, we have two really good ones already in the field with Carrie Cundell in Calgary Elbow and Jennifer Uremi in uh, Calgary Northwest. And, um, you know, that'll that'll be the key. We've got to get those people in place and and that'll help us in the future. But I think the Alberta Party's in a, a better place. I, I think we understand um, where we are and who we are. And I think now it's our job to communicate that to, to Albertans uh, heading into the election. That's our task. That's our challenge. So I'm going to follow up with that. But who is the Alberta Party? Who is the Alberta Party in December of 2022? Well, you know, I think the Alberta Party has, has really got a coherent uh, way to deal with problems. We we believe that there are local uh, inputs and solutions that exist. We believe that no, uh, the ideas uh, from the left to the right, that they doesn't mean they're all bad just because they come from another party or another source. Uh, we believe it takes, it really does take a village, um, you know, to raise people up that we, we need to work together and collaboratively. And, um, and you'll see that as our policy develops over time and our platform develops over time, we will talk about specific things like how to address the healthcare issue by empowering locals now, like they can fix things now, Chris, they should be doing things right now. There should be you know, it's it's impossible to believe, and I don't believe it, that you can't go to an emergency department or 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 a cancer hospital or a specialized doctor and say, hey, if if I give you the authority, can you get one more patient in today? And you know what? Inevitably, they tell me they can. So I know we we can. There's more things we can do. We just have to unleash them. And so the Alberta Party believes in Albertans. You know, the other parties say we do and we want to serve and we want to help you. But the Alberta Party actually believes in Albertans. We believe they have the capacity, they have the knowledge, the experience and the motivation to do a better job in Alberta. And what they need is support from the provincial government to do that. That means um, more authority. That means the resources where they need to be. And the Alberta Party stands for getting an efficient job done. You know, um, We've talked about how we're, you know, financially we're conservative. Yeah, we, you know, we believe you should be saving money. You know, when windfall revenue comes, we should be putting money away. Uh, our our future years, we not we might not be lucky enough to have hundred dollar oil and twenty twenty billion twelve billion dollar surpluses. We should be preparing the way for that not to happen. Um, we should be thinking about how we make sure we pay our way when it comes to services and that we're getting good value for money and we're spending on priorities. But at the same time, there's things that government should stay out of. <laughs> you know, there's things that the, the provincial government has no, shouldn't be modifying or trying to manufacture a different way to be schooled or a different way to get to health care. What they should be doing is providing good health care. And I, I think we see a lot of that engineering going on by legislation. And then lastly, we need to provide better support mechanisms. You know, I appreciate what's happened in the last little while with some extra money coming to some of the vulnerable Canadian or Albertans, certainly required. But for us to get here, the system's not working. And the Alberta Party believes you can't tinker around the edges. If we haven't been able to fix it in the last 10 years, we must be doing it wrong. So let's find out how to do it. Let's talk to people. And so the Alberta Party is about getting in the court, getting, you know, kind of getting in the nitty gritty of it, not being afraid to, to have messier solutions, but certainly committed to uh, efficient solutions for communities as they exist rather than as we want them to exist. So, uh, you know, that's where we are. We're, we're in the middle with 60%, 70% of the population of this province. And um, we just need them to understand that a better way exists here. The way that they would do it exists right here uh, in provincial politics. And it exists with me and the Alberta party. I was speaking and I, I'm not trying to jump into another interview that I just did recently, but <laughs> I was speaking to the mayor of Grand Prairie, Alberta last week for okay, the show. Yeah. And she was talking about how the next six months is going to be quite interesting because all the municipalities are going to be talking about their local issues. They'll be talking about their local issues for their community issues because we have a very diverse group of communities in this province. And even within larger cities like Medicine Hat, Calgary, Edmonton, Lethbridge, there's communities within communities. 
how do you get into all these communities over the next six months? Like, are you, does your wife know that between now and May, 2023, you're barely going to be at home? <laughs> yeah. You know, and I have to thank her for that because, uh, you know, even in, and that's another thing, you know, you realize how consuming it can be during that 28 day campaign. And, you know, where there was only a few hours here and there that we actually kind of saw each other and uh, very little time to plan anything for that period of time. So, yeah, you know what, Chris, it's hard work. Um, it is. You're, you're exactly right. It is diverse. It's unique. There are special little problems across this province, but lots of municipalities and lots of communities also have special solutions for those. And the Alberta Party and uh, has to be smart enough to recognize those realize that they exist and and help enable them and the, you know that's our message to communities is uh get out there and we know you can do it better show us how tell us how we're going to do what we can to enable those you got to trust people you got to decentralize you got to let go of some things in order for some things to happen i i um i keep hearing you know the same old message from the new premier from the old premier from the premier before that it just yeah, we, we're going to fix it. And this is how we're going to fix it. And Albertans don't want to be told that. They're, they want you, them, want us as government to listen to them and say, hey, this is the problem. This is how we could solve it here. You know, I, I realize it's different in Grand Prairie than it is in Brooks. And so they'll have a unique solution. And I really think that um, the mayor hit it right on the head. We have to listen to those unique solutions and empower them and enable them at that level. And that takes a shift in thinking. To make it go full circle here, Barry, because I want to yep. make sure I get Mayor Clayton, the Grand Prairie mayor, it was talking mm -hmm. about health care because they just opened up this brand new facility in Grand Prairie. The the one of the newest hospitals in all of Alberta yeah. took took a long enough time to actually build it, but it's open. But they're running at a deficit right now because they don't have the staff and they're having issues. While yes, a local issue is we need to fix this. The provincial government needs to step in and also say, okay, how can we help you fix it, right? Because the, the we can't download and offload issues all onto the municipalities, can we? No, we can't, not unless we're willing to give the resource too. And, and there's some merit to that. I don't know whether in healthcare it makes sense. It probably doesn't at that level, but, you know, there's probably some other things. So you're absolutely right. And that's why I get back to priority spending. So you can't just... You know, we collect $65, 75000000000 billion a year in this province for 4.5 million people. And somehow we cannot seem to fund the important things. We can't seem to fund education. We can't seem to fund health care. We can't seem to fund social supports. Why is that? Well, yeah. my thinking is that we're just not sticking with our priorities. Um, as Mayor Clayton knows, and every mayor across this, uh, mayor and Reeve across this province knows, we can't run deficits. We have to fund priorities and some things have to wait. And those are hard decisions to be made. And sometimes politically that can cost you, but also making the a best decision, a good decision is good for you politically. So I think we have to get to that. Um, there's no way that hospital, we, we had long enough to plan for it to be full and to be running. And so we knew very well what the resources were required to get that job done. It just, drives me crazy that all of a sudden we open the door and say, oh, well, sorry, we don't have enough money for this, or we don't have a tech for that, or we don't have a doctor for this. And we've known we were, that place was going to open sooner or later. Why, why wasn't that planning done? And I see a lot of that. I talked to an emergency doctor in medicine who told me the very same thing. There's not a great HR plan for healthcare in the province of Alberta. Why isn't there? I, you know, I don't know. Don't understand it. We, we, we can't, I couldn't run the city like that. We had a great HR plan in the city. Um, but um, we need it for the province. So I agree with her. There's got to be some resources. There's got to be some practical planning done. And um, sometimes facing the reality is the hardest part, but let's do that first and then we can get the job done. Before we turn to the future, I have one last personal question for you here, and then we'll turn it into 2023 and what it has in store for yourself, but also the party. Looking back on the last 12 months, looking back on 2022 for you and the party, what's been the highlight? I, you know, I think I think the highlight was running in the by-election. I, I think it showed that the Alberta Party has a legitimate place in Alberta politics. I I think that uh, people saw that there was an opportunity to vote for something. And 
well, albeit not enough people saw it, we certainly gained more popular vote than we had ever before in that riding and ever before, except for, you know, one by-election win when Greg Clark won in terms of percentage. So we did very, very well there. Um, I think we held our own when we uh, were in the forums because we had practical local solutions for a lot of the problems. I think people saw that. So, you know, I, I, I think the high point was, uh, you know, oddly enough, a by-election that we lost. But it certainly positioned the Alberta party and myself uh, to be in a better place come May of 2023. And uh, I think you'll see some prizes. I think Albertans want accountability. And I think they see that perhaps through the Alberta party, there's a way for it, regardless of who ends up forming government, that the Alberta party's approach will allow accountability back into the legislature. And, and I think that's good for us. With always the positive question comes the negative question. Looking back on the last 12 months, is there something you wish you could have done a little bit differently, worked a little bit harder, or advocated for an issue a little bit stronger? Yeah, you know, I I think maybe that, you know, um, just, just all of the messaging, uh, you know, you always think you could say it better, could do it better, uh, that there's another way to break through, you know, we always hope for more success there. Um, and, you know, I I think um, one thing that we could have done better is we just could could always be better prepared. You can always be ready earlier. You can always be a little bit more uh, planned out in terms of, you know, when the by-election came, even though we were up and running very quickly, you know, it would have been nice to have, an, you know, been really fully ready another week that would have helped. Would that have got us a few more points? You always think about it that way. So we had a great group of volunteers and a great group of dedicated um uh, people on the Alberta Party team that uh, see that and they're working hard and collecting other people to make sure because the resource is an issue for us and and we struggle with that. And so, uh, you know, it just we need to be better prepared and, and that's going to take some money and effort and some people to step up and help us out. But, you know, I hope that happens in the next uh, next few months leading up to the election. So 2023, we're heading into 2023 provincial election. What does the year have in store for the Alberta party first? Well, lots of candidate selections. I mean, we've, we've been talking to a lot of them lately and it's amazing the quality of people coming up uh, that want to serve their communities. And I, I've said this uh, in the by-election and, uh, and I, and I'll say it here again, is that, you know, if you're, if you're coming to run, you just want to be the MLA, you probably don't fit in the Alberta party mold. What we're looking for are people that want to serve their communities. They want to bring a message about their community, solutions from their community, challenges from their community into Edmonton. Uh, they're not a pipeline for the party to be feeding information down. So um, we've candidate selections really important for us and we have some great ones coming out uh, and uh, getting ready to get go for us. Uh, so that looks important. You know, getting just the logistics of being able to run 87 campaigns and being able to control all that and, 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 and keep the momentum going, uh, you know, this isn't a one election and done for the Alberta party. We're here for the long haul. So we wanna make sure we're building and building and building. And then second, I think lastly, the the other important part that we need to do in the next uh, six months is, is to get people to commit to us, you know, go out there and get them to buy memberships, uh, get them to contribute uh, a few dollars um, so that they, you know, to understand that there needs to be a commitment in order to make change in Alberta and that the Alberta party is the vehicle to get that change. So we have three big challenges in front of us, but you know, we have a great group of people that are willing to make that happen. And, and I'm going to work my butt off for the next six months to uh, ensure that we're successful. So you basically took my last question out of my mouth, but I'm going <laughs> to ask it anyway. What does 2023 have in store for you besides politics? Is there things that you want to see get done for the party, for the province, for your community, what does 2023 have in store for Barry Morishita? Yeah, you know, absolutely. I, 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 you know, I am a community member. And so, you know, you try to be part of things as much as you can. Uh, there's, there's always issues to advocate for. Um, it, it's unfortunate for, you know, not having, not having a seat in the legislature to, to have a little bit more leverage. But like I said, I'm, going to hold our local MLA accountable for the things that this community needs and the things that need to be addressed and an understanding of what will work here. So that's a really important part of 2023 for me. Um, you know, getting ready and making sure that uh, we can have enough uh, 
horsepower going into the, the election in 2023 for, for the Alberta Party is a big part of my job, making sure that people know about us. So traveling the province over the next six months is a big is a big job going to local community events and meeting people where they I mean it's just it's just gonna be the work that has to be done. So 2023, particularly the next five months are gonna be very intense. Uh, but I think there's going to be a lot to be gained from it. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to the challenge. I have to ask one last question. I, I, I said that was my last one, but this is going to be my last one. Um, it's jokingly said that Medicine Hat is the forgotten corner of Alberta. It is often the corner of Alberta that funds don't usually get to. Um, with a premier who is not relatively well known Let's be honest, she's known, but she's not known politically for her new stances on issues. Are you concerned that Medicine Hat, Brooks Medicine Hat, could be forgotten even more, even with a new MLA who is the premier in the in your constituency, but also in your quadrant of the province? Yeah, and I and I'm I'm more concerned about it from the point of view that, you know, when is she is she really going to make the time to pay attention to what we're looking for? what fits here what are the solutions that brooks medicine hat needs or is she you know just going to show up with a check and a, an announcement and say you know here i am thank you uh, that's not good enough right you know i think in order to serve your constituency well you have to take the time to listen and understand and that's more of the concern so you know as a premier she has a big job i get that um you know and i and i and i and i hope she's d- does a good job uh, for alberta but when it comes to local constituency, my big concern is, is she going to make enough time? Is she going to be able to do that? And I see that as, as a big challenge for this constituency going forward, because um, if you're not heard, it doesn't matter. And we will be forgotten again and our issues will go unsolved again and uh, unknown again. And uh, that's not acceptable. Barry, uh, um... I want to take a moment here and say something personally to you on the record. Um, Over the last 12 months, for those who know and who have been listening to my show, I've been going through some medical issues and I'm going, there's been some highs and lows for the last 20, uh, 12 months for myself. You taking time out of your busy schedule to sit down and chat with me over the last 12 months has been one of the highlights of my year. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart, from the bottom of my husband's heart, because he knows how much I look forward to sitting down with you and chatting. Um, Thank you so much. Thank you for everything you've done, everything you continue to do. And um, I appreciate your friendship, man. No. And, and Chris, let me, let me, let me return the favor because uh, I think what you're attempting to do, what you've been successful at doing, um, you know, educating people about government, about good government, about um, giving people a platform that they haven't had before. Um, in the new media that we have, it can sometimes, uh, you know, the, the the mess, the good things that that are possible by serving can get lost. And I think you've done a wonderful job of illustrating what's happening positively in this province, both from all kinds of levels. Um, being being brave enough to invite a broad cross section of people. Um, being so open-minded when you uh, interview people. I think you're doing a real service and uh, I I wish you every success because I think these are the kind of platforms that can change the way we do politics. It can move away from division and conflict and uh, talk about the things that uh, we can get done together. So you keep working too. I I wish you every success. I hope everything goes well for you because I'd love to do a million more of these interviews with you. Barry, I wasn't going to cry. I tried not to cry during this. I've (laughs) balling my eyes out these days but thank you so much barry for sitting down with me um for those who want to learn more about the alberta party the links are in the show notes their facebook their twitter barry's twitter uh and their website buy membership if you like what you heard or reach out if you want to get involved highly recommend it so with that this has been the cross border interviews with chris brown have yourself an excellent day and we'll be back tomorrow with another interview for our 2022 year review talk to you later guys 